Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Prioxis and I'm back with another video. Now I said I wouldn't upload this, but I think I need to, not because I won, more so to talk about what I did wrong and what I did right. I honestly should have done this in my first fight um, in the ESFL. I actually lost that fight if you guys are unaware. Uh, I believe it was a split or it was a unanimous, but it was 29-28. But... Here we go here with this second fight, man. And I want to tell you guys right off the bat, with the first fight and the second fight, the ping was over 100. Now, this ping here on this particular fight, I don't know where this dude lives, but it's 181 ping, and it actually jumps up to, like, 200 before this match starts. Or maybe not before it starts, but a little bit back, if I was to rewind, the ping jumps up. There it goes, 199. You can round that up to 200. You can see it's bouncing around. You know, the ping is just terrible. It really is, and... It's unfortunate, um, you know, but hopefully there are better servers and all of that things like maybe dedicated servers next year or whenever USC 5 releases. But this fight here, um, I know this matchup pretty well. I mean, I've played a little bit of ranked before I actually, you know, did my match and uh, it was flyweight and I was using different flyweights to see uh, which one felt the best. And Moreno was basically it. I used TJ and the problem with TJ is he has terrible head health and he has not great block so right off the bat i wanted to put pressure on this guy and i will be pausing this video and rewinding and stuff like that to just show you guys you know a deeper analysis of what was going on so the fight first started out and uh because of the delay i knew i would have a problem with certain things now i know brandon moreno weakness is going to be his ability to check i mean his ability to take a lot of leg health damage so he immediately starts off with a low kick and i'm like okay yeah i'm gonna have to basically time these I'm mean, basically have to time these these checks like preemptively, but there we go. He gets another one, and uh, I'm like, okay, yeah, this is gonna be tough. So put the pressure on him a little bit. Nice jabs, crosses to the body, to the head, of course. He catches my kick. Hit him with a lead hook right after that. Right now I'm just playing the footsies. That right there, I checked that, but it didn't do check damage. I hit him with a nice slip cross, and you'll see me do this a lot. I will do this a a lot because a lot of people don't utilize this enough and that's your reach advantage brandon moreno has i believe a 70 inch reach and tj has 64 so that means if my feet is planted and i throw a jab it's going to be you know what i'm saying it's going to be about right here it's probably going to extend about right here versus tj that's probably going to extend about right here right so when you do this, well, what I was doing basically was I was just throwing my jab and my cross out there. So I, if I caught him, I caught him. Again, keep in mind, the ping is damn near 200 ping. So here we go. I'm just throwing it out there. Brandon Moreno also has like a level 5 jab. I'm pretty sure it's level 5. His, level, his cross is like level 3. You can see he's utilizing, the, you know, his, his strengths versus CJ's weaknesses. Heading with a nice counter there. As you can see, I'm, I'm just looking to put the pressure on him a little bit. Because I know, you know, my experience is going against Moreno's, man. The, the, his ability to press really well. On top of that, TJ Dillashaw has crazy footwork, so I don't want to play footsies in the kickboxing game with him. Okay. Nice. And again, I'm okay with trading. Brandon Moreno has crazy health stats. I think he has like a 97 chin. So, really wasn't worried about taking too much damage here. Okay. Go to the body. You faint to the body. Jab up top. I throw the jab across. Lead uppercut. Boom. He continues trading. So I go ahead and throw again. And now I'm just walking him down a little bit. Nice combination. I'm over. I'm overthrowing, but I'm not expecting him to counter because he hasn't really moved his head to look to counter at all this match. So I'm like, okay. With me knowing that, I can, you know, kind of let my hands go a little bit. Okay. And the thing is, as the fight progresses, I don't know if this happens to you guys as well, but as these fights progress and you get deeper and deeper into the rounds, it's like the stats start to take over. And it does that for me a lot. Look at that combination. I clinch him here, and then I go for a takedown because I knew these guys aren't really that great on the ground. But they do have some guys that are a bit cheesy. But all in all, they're not really that great on the ground. And again, that's no disrespect to them. That's just after you know we've done our film study on these guys so i switched stances because again it's very hard to check this guy's kicks 
And um, I just want to save my, my left leg because Brandon Moreno has a switch stance of probably like 80 something. So it's not good. And you, you add in, he has terrible leg health to a terrible switch stance. So you just want to be careful on, on your lead leg. So I'll go ahead and preserve it for the rest of the round. So I'd say I'm winning this round. I mean, I got the rock. If you look at his overall damage, head health damage is going to score the most. And you can see I am uh, ahead of him on the head health. But he does have my leg chewed up. But not really by, you know, amount that's going to beat the head health, bro. And on top of that, I got a nasty rock. Here we go. Round two. Okay. Now, I did have my camp in my corner. Nice jab cross. Lead uppercut combination landed. Nice head movement there, but he did catch me at the end. Then, boom, another low kick. And again, I'm out here. I'm throwing my jab out there. That's something you're going to see me do a lot with Brandon Moreno. Is, is throw the jab out there. So, right here, I shoot the takedown. And uh, because, again, my camp, they rolled up. my camp that's in my corner, you know, shoot the takedown. Okay, cool. So, we shoot the takedown, get him down to the ground. And I'm already knowing with the MS, it's going to be hard to deny take transitions. So, I just want to talk about things I did right and things I did wrong. So I did that cool. I postured it up, two strikes, went back down. Okay. I go to arm triangle fake. He gets to the guard. Nice. I fake. I fake again. I fake again. I throw a strike. And then I posture up. Throw one strike. And I'm basically playing the ground game very safe right now. I go over into the half guard, which is smart. Okay. And again, I'm playing it very safe. Boom. Side control. Last time, I believe he went up. This time he is going to go maybe right. Okay, nope, he denied my side saddle, so boom, he transitions left. And, and I'm doing not everything just right, but I'm I'm, me, I'm, on, I'm on top and I'm able to, you know, do a little work. But right there, I threw that uh, that left hook, uh, ground and pound multiple times, and he read it and actually reversed it. And as I look back at it again, that was actually pretty stupid of me. It's okay. Boom, he postures up and gets off two shots, lands both. And uh, this, this round kind of gets a bit a bit dry. I reversed the, the position here because he was so worried about throwing punches. But this round gets a bit dry because, I mean, it's slower-paced grappling. So you know how that goes. He gets to the guard, and he catches me while I'm transitioning. So it automatically continues my animation, and he gets the reversal. And boom, he goes into the half guard from here. Do the fake. He pops up again. He gets off two shots, three shots, landed all three. And right now, I'm really behind. Uh, I'm not behind bad, but I'm behind to the point where I need. I have to either get off some damage, either on bottom some way, maybe some submission threats, or I would need to basically stand up and get like a good ten punches in in order to win this round. And I'm talking about 10, like, power punches. Boom, he denies that. I, I assume he was going to go top mount here because he hasn't really shown it, so I denied that one there. Boom, I go back to the guard. I fake down. I fake down again. He denies that one. He postures up. He's probably going to get back into... Nope, like he doesn't have enough stamina. So right here, I take his back, and I, I think I try to go top mount. To, again, I wanted to get in some damage before the round ended. He denied it, so I get up. And um, again, I wanted to look to do something. Because basically this round is 100% lost. But again, it's okay. I'm not tripping. Here we go. Round three. I know if I can put the pressure on this guy, I'll be fine. So that's what I wanted to look to do in this third round. And you'll see me amp up the pressure. And again, I'm throwing my jab crosses out there. I check his kick. Boom. Looking to trade with him. I know I will have the advantage after it. You can see I'm just aggressive. I'm just walking forward, marching him down. I check the kick again. He's throwing them from far, so they're a bit telegraphed, able to see him. Okay. Nice. I could have countered him there. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't. But you can see him just walking forward, putting the pressure on him. I think he was a crane kick. Yep. Throws a crane kick there, catching me with it. So as soon as he did that, I just knew, okay, I got to watch out for that. Okay. Right, nice, nice low kick. Boom, catch with the three piece, drop him. So, uh, I want to talk about that sequence right there, really quickly. Um, let's slow it down a little bit. Oh, not that. Playback speed, put it by half. So, 
One of my favorite combinations that I like to use to intercept people that are coming forward is a cross lead uppercut because the cross is stopping power. The lead uppercut just does very good damage and it's fast. So, you know, the combination comes out much faster. So right here, I throw left hook jab. I throw cross. But again, you want to look at his head off. Let's, let's always look at his head off and why I continue throwing. I throw the hook, right? I throw the jab. I throw the cross. Now his head off is here. Lead uppercut rocks him, and then I throw the uppercut again as he tries to duck, and it actually drops him. So right there, I'm just taking advantage of my reach advantage that I have and Brandon Moreno's speed. One, two, lead uppercut, and that was really fast. And I'll show that one more time in real speed. Look at this. Look at this. Left hook, pink, 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 and then drop him. Now we we have the advantage. We're winning around at this point, so I kind of I kind of like you can see I relax a little bit as far as pressuring, but I do land that nice combination, nice by him. Now what I'm looking for honestly is what I'm literally waiting on him to throw is a crane kick. I'm waiting on the crane kick, but he doesn't throw it. Now I put the pressure on a little bit. You no, know, again I back off. So kind of passive aggressive. Nice hook by him. But you can tell that I'm like, I'm not coasting, but I'm like, I'm not forcing either. I wanted to win the round, and basically with that knockdown, I do win it. But then I hit him with a combination, boom, boom, into the ground and pound. And right there, I finish the fight. But again, we're going to go back and talk about the sequence and what led up to him getting knocked down. So I'm going to slow it down 0 0.5, and let's look at it. So again, right now, at this point of the fight, obviously, I have a little bit more head health, but I'm the better boxer. So unless he lands a good counter, I'm probably going to win most boxing exchanges. So right here, I throw jab. He throws the TJ signature hook. I throw jab again. I throw jab, rear hook, right? And I catch him. So let's see. What did he throw? Yep, he threw an uppercut. So we traded again. I'm the better boxer, right? So he throws that strike, and then he th throws a pull. See, he threw an empty strike. So he did a pull. Who were an empty counter. He moved his head, pulled back, and tried to uppercut. But I didn't throw any punches for him to pull. And I followed with a right hook, catching him vulnerable as he's throwing this right uppercut. As you see here. Watch out. He throws his right uppercut. Pull, uppercut. I catch him vulnerability frames. Throws an uppercut. I throw uppercut again because I caught him last time with it. I call him again. And hook, 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 the end. Now, right there at the end of that sequence, I only threw hooks. You know, usually um, I like to throw the straight strikes, but because of me knowing, you know, if I throw a straight strikes and he slips it and he takes my back, he can go for an arm bar. I knew if I just throw the hooks, I'll be fine. He won't be able to, because of the stamina, like if we look at the stamina. Now, again, I didn't really pay much attention to this while I was in the match, but as I look at it now, even with this much stamina, look how much stamina he has. He won't be able to reverse it. He won't be able to reverse it. Not yet. And then with this much grapple advantage, he won't be able to do one of those reversals. He'll just basically slip the strike. But me with me only throwing hooks, it'd be much harder for him to frame it. Because you can slip either way, right? It, let's say he slipped right or left with his right analog stick. Well, he's going to dodge all straight strikes versus if he wants to frame my hooks, he would have to frame a specific side, whether that's on the right or on the left. So... We knock him down, that hook landed, and that hook put him out. And that was the end of the fight, guys. Now, as I watch this fight back again, I mean I look at my performance and I and I personally rate this like a like a six. Like a six out of ten. Wasn't the greatest round I me. Mean, round two was a bit sloppy with the grappling, but again, I stress this enough because after coming from playing on land and uh then playing connection, even even a forty ping, thirty ping, that bro that sucks like when we compare it to land a lot of you guys are going to be like bro that's 40 ping you want to understand until you actually play it on land and um i've said this one time i've said this multiple times and i'll say it time and time again like a fighter like israel adesanya is a god on land and if you don't believe me go ask go go to one of romero's videos go into his comment section and ask him how does um, Israel Adesanya fell all in. He's going to tell you he feels like a god. 
I actually got to use Israel Adesanya, but it didn't get broadcasted. But I did work with them. Israel Adesanya on land is really good because you can utilize his reach advantage instantly. You know, there's no input delay with the game. There's no input delay with ping. Not, there's no delay. But again, a lot of people wouldn't understand unless they actually, uh, you know, was on land. But anybody there would tell you land is so much better than anything ping. But it is what it is, man. This fight, I got the win. Toon Squad, the camp, we did win. Um, so we're currently one and one. We'll be playing again against EK in two weeks. So. Be sure to come out and support as we try to get the dub against Elite Kings. I do appreciate all you guys that made it this far into the video, that watched all of the video. It really means a lot. I appreciate you guys. Before you guys do head out, don't forget to leave a like. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, and y'all stay up, stay blessed, and keep moving forward. All right? Love you guys, man. Peace.